If you are struggling to find some autopsy experience for yourself, just foreshadowing so you can apply to school or find out if this program is right for you, then check out this video. I'm gonna let you know what we do in the morgue on a day-to-day -day basis when we get an autopsy. Hey guys, my name is Luke with Canadian Path Assistant. Let's jump right into the morgue. So typically first thing when I come into the morgue, I will get there you know, five or 10 minutes before shift starts, I'll get changed into my scrubs and then head into our office. I'll just check our phone for any messages overnight. And then from there, I'll just do some QC of all our equipment in the morgue. So I'm just checking fridge and freezer temperatures, making sure our fans and ventilation systems work and that there's nothing that needs to be sent out for maintenance. After that, I usually hang around until about 8.15. We'll get a call from our autopsy desk letting us know if there are any cases. Alternatively, sometimes a pathologist or a resident will pop down and let us know that they are waiting on a case. Typically, they'll do this if they, first of all, want to get started as soon as possible and they know there's a case, or if they know there's a case but they have a meeting, rounds, or something to go to that will postpone the start of an autopsy. They just give me a quick heads up. From there, if the autopsy case is a go, they'll let me know what time they'd like to get started, and then I'll go grab the body. So we have a large cooler that has a check-in, check-out board uh, right next to it, so I can check what rack the actual body is in. I'll wheel a trolley into the fridge and pull that body out of our fridge. On the way out of the fridge and to our main autopsy suite, there is an in-floor scale, so I'll stop there and just weigh the person that is scheduled for autopsy. And then from there, we'll wheel them into the main autopsy suite. Now, if this is an infectious case, where there needs to be extra precaution, we do have a high risk isolation suite. So they won't go into our main suite in that case, they'll go into there. Typically go in there if they have a schedule one type disease, things like TB, some kind of hemorrhagic fever or some kind of very, uh, very infectious type of disease. From there, once they are wheeled into the main room, I will transfer them onto the autopsy table. Usually the pathologist and our resident is getting changed at this point in time, so I have a few minutes to kind of get these things done. I'll get them onto the table, just make sure that there is a bucket of formalin set up for the pathologist, that they have the tools and equipment that they'll need for the autopsy. Typically things are left set up at least on our end of the table or our, on our side of things, so I don't have to worry about setting anything up. Once I get the person slid over onto the table, I can start an external exam. If there's a resident there, the pathologist would like them to at least be involved or to do the external exam, but if it's just me and the pathologist, I'll start working on that. I'm noting things like tattoos, scars, bruises, any kind of um, external pathology, any kind of medical interventions that have been done, so IVs that are in place, uh, surgical scars, anything like that. Well, that'll just get marked down on a piece of paper along with other things like you know, hair color, dentition, height, weight, and the overall body appearance of the individual that is there for autopsy. Once the pathologist and or resident comes into the room after putting their autopsy gowns on, they will typically check the identification of the body and then review the consent. Autopsies can come in a variety of flavors, but our most standard type of autopsy is the full or complete autopsy, and there may or may not be consent for retention of tissue. Typically, some kind of tissue is always retained during autopsy, and that's just as a backup in case we ever need to submit more tissue, but that consent for retention is related to a kind of any kind of educational or teaching um, you know, teaching purposes. So if there's no consent after a minimum retention period, once the case is signed out, all that tissue will be discarded and won't be used for anything else. Provided the autopsy is good to go, I will start usually on one side of the body and make a Y incision. That's from shoulder to shoulder, about to the breastbone, and then down to the pubis. Then once this is opened up, we'll reflect the skin back and start to open the rib cage. Now, this does seem a little bit barbaric when you see it in first hand, but we actually just use garden shears or big clippers to cut through the ribs. Uh, you can use a bone saw to do this as well, but typically I don't bother, just use the shears. And then once that chest plate is off, just so the pathologist has something to do and they're not just sitting and waiting for organs forever, we will remove the heart, give that to them, and they can start dissecting that. From there, I will usually remove the bowel. So that is something that we'll do. We'll tie off the duodenum and cut that off and then remove it from the very bottom end, basically right above the rectum. Pull that out, uh, put that in a bucket to be opened later. Then we'll go up to the neck and typically cut right above the hyoid bone and start to remove all the tissue from there all the way down to the basically the base of the pelvic cavity. Once that tissue has been removed, I'll typically open or run the bowel, and this is just to basically cut open the entire bowel to look for any lesions or, or weird things there. Then I'll move on to opening the brain. Uh, that's made with an incision around the scalp, and then the skull is sawed open 
brain will be removed and placed into formalin. Then the last thing we'll do is remove the spinal cord. So the vertebral bodies will be sawed off and then you can actually pull the spinal cord out of the body. That goes into the uh, brain bucket filled with formalin and typically that is the entire evisceration process. Usually around then the pathologist and a resident is done their dissection or is wrapping up their dissection so I can start cleanup. So I'll be mopping the floor with some kind of soap cleaner and bleach and once they're done with their organ dissection things that they are not retaining in their formalin bucket they'll put in a bag that gets sewn back into the body. We'll sew that up so we head back on with the skull cap. That body can be zipped back in the body bag placed back into our fridge and released to the vital stats or the hospital admitting who will then contact the funeral home to get the body released. Once that's out of the way, I can usually finish cleanup and that usually wraps up my involvement in an autopsy case in a standard day. So now that was quick, we kind of flew through it, but that is what our typical day in the morgue looks like when we get an autopsy case. Thanks for stopping by and I'll catch you next time.